Howdy, folks. It's Hello. good to be with you again. And uh, here we are, uh, wrapping up March. No. Yeah. This you is watch. only the That's right. 12th. Blink. That's right. <laughs> Blink of the eye and it'll be gone. And uh, we'll be in April. Tomorrow. Yeah. So, April showers bring what? May flowers. May flowers. <laughs> Sorry, bad dad joke. Couldn't <laughs> help myself. What was the joke today? Um, About cows? Why do cows have hooves and not feet? Yeah. Go ahead, tell them. You ready? They lack toes. There you go. <laughs> ah. And you thought lack this was going to be a Bible toes. study. Really, it's <laughs> pray <lack> for us. <laughs> Well, merry heart doeth good like a medicine, and it's good to laugh and enjoy the humor of the Lord. You know, I think Jesus had a sense of humor. Um, when he told the story about, you know, why are you trying to get the speck out of your brother's eye and you got a log hanging out of your eye? I think he was, I think he had a sense of humor and uh, parody, maybe. Uh, but we can enjoy uh, the emotion of humor uh, that the Lord gives us, so long as it doesn't come at the expense of another person. And uh, we have to be careful. In this day and age we live in, it seems like a lot of humor and comedy is, is predicated upon somebody else's expense and hurting them and slandering them in some respects, uh, being sarcastic and, and those type of things we don't want to do. That's speaking death. It, it is. It's not words of life. It's speaking words of death. And so enjoying the things that, I mean, God has a sense of humor by making the duck bill platypus. What? I mean, you take a look at this critter. He's got fur, he's got webbed feet, and he lays eggs. Mm -hmm. Crazy. And, the and he's got a duck eggs bill. drink milk. <laughs> <laughs> And people look at that and go, wait a minute, that makes absolutely no sense. What is this? And I think it was God just saying, you know, I have all wisdom and knowledge, and I'll do what I want to do because I enjoy it. I'm creative. And uh, I think that he does that. Um, it's It's been fun. Uh, one time Don and I were driving along the road, and we looked, and there over in a, in a corral area were two horses scratching each other's back. Oh, it was at uh, the zoo in, in Hawaii. And oh, in Hawaii, didn't get, yeah. Didn't and, get a picture. Uh, and they're scratching <laughs> each other's back, nibbling on the back, scratching it, and you can tell both yeah. of them enjoyed it. <laughs> it was the funniest thing. And maybe yeah. you've seen nature pictures of humorous things. Uh, we have I, some of my copy. And, well, anyways, getting to... <laughs> The Bible study, the book of Proverbs. I do have something. Oh, you do. I thought you would. Book of <laughs> Proverbs, chapter 2 in our Bible study, Greater Than Gold, the book of Proverbs. And if you are still needing that Bible study, email us at newlifeohio at gmail.com. I wrote down the address so I wouldn't flub it up. <laughs> so newlifeohio at gmail.com and let us know that you need a Bible study and what we'll do is give us your address, uh, your name, maybe a phone number, and what we can do is set up a, a time either you can come by and get it or we can take it to your house or we can mail it to you, whatever needs to happen so that you can be with us on this Bible study in the book of Proverbs. And uh, it's been interesting. Don and I bump into people different places. We got a neighbor that's watching and her friend is watching and a gal in our church and her neighbor are watching. And so uh, thank you for joining Your us. Your sisters. Huh? <laughs> Your sisters. My sisters are watching. One's living in Alabama. Alabama. Mm -hmm. The other one lives out in... Uh, Newberry. Burton. Newberry. Newberry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Newberry. I had to think of that. And so... Um, if you would like a Bible study, um, we'd certainly like to send you one. So let us know, and we'll make sure we get it to you. Uh, we're in Proverbs chapter 2, and we finally worked our way. We're climbing the mountain of the book of Proverbs. Now, I need to let you know, folks, our live Bible study on Wednesday mornings. It's the last chapter. We're in the last chapter. <laughs> <So> <laughs> doesn't mean anything, though. doesn't mean a thing, because, <laughs> well, 
Well, well when I'm not there, you guys go faster. <laughs> so <laughs> so we, <laughs> we take rabbit trails and let the Lord do whatever he wants to do. And hopefully you're finding wisdom and encouragement through that. So, my dear, you said you have something. Yes. Okay. Uh, we're speaking of creating, and um, I'm reading a book now that has gotten me thinking more about um, speaking, because he talks about speaking and our words. And and um, one of the things that Ange Angeline shared on Sunday was about grumbling and complaining, which was kind of cute because it, it um, uh, what is that word? It, mm -hmm. um, our grandson responded to it and he was convicted. <laughs> he was convicted. Oh yeah, he, <laughs> he had to stay home because his older brother was sick. But he was moving too slow. He didn't get and, up and get and got ready. And dad yeah. stayed home and let the little one the one that's going to be six years old, sleep in because he was moving slow. So go ahead. So then um, he comes up to him and he comes says, up to his dad. I'm sorry, Dad. And he says, well, what are you sorry for? And he said, Auntie Angeline said uh, not to grumble and complain. <laughs> and he was grumbling. <laughs> and it was like, wow <laughs> here he's listening to the sermon because he was complaining because he couldn't go you know outside and play he couldn't be play around his toys. friends play with toys because he had to he you know he wasn't able to come to church and 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 so it was it was just really kind of cute the way it convicted and him out of the mouth of babes conviction hit and convicted Ray. dad too because <laughs> he was feeling bad because he couldn't be in church because i had to be home with my sick kid and, and so it's, it was kind of fun to to see how God used that in a little, almost six-year-old boy. Yeah, this month he'll be six. Yeah. But anyway, she talked about um, what you're speaking, and it, it really is creating yeah. because uh, in Romans, what four seventeen, it talks about the God um, who brings back to life, and then He also creates out of nothing. You know, He speaks. And um, maybe I can find it real quick, but it, it just it it just really hit me. And this book that I'm reading, he was talking about. Do you realize that um, the spirit was hovering in Genesis? Oh, was it four seventeen or? Hmm. I thought I was on four. Wait a minute here. Sorry, I, I want to get it right because I'm not. Yep, here it kiss. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. He, God was talking about um, Abraham in the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. So he calls, you know, he speaks it into existence. And and um, the when I was reading that book, it, it talked about how. Um, speaking you know the the holy spirit was hovering over there that over the earth when it was in, in chaos and darkness and black and it wasn't until god spoke let there be light he spoke and then it was happening and and so you know there's there's power that we don't understand we either give it to the enemy or we give it to god with what we're speaking and what we're saying and uh, god hated the grumbling and complaining of the Israelites and uh, they were part of it was they weren't trusting God you know they weren't um, believing in him and trusting in him they they didn't have that understanding so what the creation though the the, the part about creation um, this fellow said that you create the presence of Jesus with your mouth and I thought huh that's kind of interesting and then, um, so when we're praising the Lord in, in, in our corporate uh, gatherings and when we start um, extolling his name and saying, this is how God was for me, we're creating the, the um, atmosphere for the presence of God to come into. That's, that's a better way to say it. Yeah. We're creating the atmosphere, atmosphere. in our lives to allow the presence of Jesus to be discerned. And Because he's all that, present. 
when he comes, things happen. And, um, and that's because um, this fellow was saying too that he said he has always said that spiritual gifts reside in the Holy Spirit. So unless you have the presence of the Holy Spirit there, and he brings in Jesus, you're not going to have the operation of the spiritual gifts because you need God's presence to be operating in your life. And then he can move and do things, whether it be miraculous, whether it be um, just provisional, any anything that he does, which is and uses his spiritual gifts, it's because of the presence of God being in your life and the presence of the Holy Spirit, and and so that means that if the presence of the Holy Spirit's there, hey, whatever gift is needed at that time will manifest, mm -hmm. and and it was just uh, just a cool thought that that's why he's you know and and we uh, on Sundays pray for the presence of the Lord to be there. And, and it's because when we invite his presence in and we're open to him, then he can move in our midst and things can happen. And, but we need to be receptive to that and listening to that and give opportunity for it to be created and spoken out. And then it manifests and happens. And it was just really kind of cool to see that, you know, it, it's tied into watching what we speak and what we say because are you going to create an atmosphere that allows chaos and the enemy to come in and destroy or are you going to create an atmosphere that allows the holy spirit's presence to come in and to move as he wants to move in our midst and, and give us the good gifts that he wants to give us and be the good god that he wants to be to us it's with our mouth and that's why we praise that's why we give glory to god because we're um helping to create that atmosphere that he feels at home with that he wants to be with us yeah uh, proverbs 18 20 and 21 says with the fruit of a man's mouth his stomach will be satisfied he will be satisfied with the product of his lips and then verse 21 says death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. And so the things we say either bring satisfaction, abundance, or it brings destruction and lack. One of the things that we can say brings life, and another thing can bring death. We make the choice uh, whenever we get into a situation where we want to react to something, we need to ask ourselves, is this going to be life or is this going to be death? And uh, many times, uh, as Proverbs says, sometimes it's best not to say anything at all and appear wise. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's up to us to be uh, mindful of what the Holy Spirit's speaking to us in a situation. And there are times, every one of us, I'm sure, have had that experience where we're ready to blast somebody and the Holy Spirit says, don't do it. You're don't reacting. do it. Don't do it. <laughs> and sometimes we listen, hallelujah. And other times, oh no, we didn't listen. And then we got to eat crow and work at apologizing. Uh, it says that a, per, a neighbor and a brother offended is hard to win back, and, and, and the way they're offended is by what we, we say. It's what comes out of our mouth. Our and God is. created us in his image, and one of the ways I believe that he created us in his image is we have power in the words that we speak, just like God has power in what he says. When he said, let there be light, light obeyed him. And so we have to be careful with the things that we say because either life or death are going to obey the words that we speak. Mm -hmm. um, I, I try to be very careful. When my kids were growing up, um, we did not use the word stupid uh, in shut our family <laughs> or shut up. We never used, matter of fact, right now I winced, you know, just uh, those are words we don't use because they lack any sense of value or honor for the person that you're talking to. And so we tried to make sure that uh, when we talked to the kids, we used words that um, they might have been hard words because of discipline that needed to be shared, 
but we always tried to end our time with correction by praying with them and hugging them and loving them rather than I disavow you and just get out of my sight type of thing. Tear them down. Um, we build them up. Yeah, we would build them up rather than tear them down. And and our society is so good at disavowing and marginalizing people and and speaking death. We we see that in songs today and in movies and uh, uh, sh- little little video shorts that people put on about you know messing somebody up by by pranking them and and hurting them really and uh and it's it's being perpetuated throughout the media we have to be careful to be people of light the bible says do all things without grumbling and complaining now my understanding grumbling and complaining is a verbal thing it's a spoken word isn't it mm-hmm. and and philippians tells us paul writes about it and uh, he says that if we do all things without grumbling and complaining we appear as light in a dark generation and uh, i've literally have seen that where rather than grumbling complaining about having to do something uh, just minding what i needed to do to get it done and being thankful and uh, people would come up and say how come you're so happy doing this crummy thing i said hey it's a job i'm getting paid for it i'm you know whatever i whatever i needed to say at that time and uh, it works much better than going along with sometimes the crowd and complaining about man we got to do this that and the other and uh, it has led to uh, opportunities to be able to share with people well we should get into this philippians 2 14. we wrote that at the bottom of our chore list at how at the house for all the kids, it was on the bottom of the list so that they had to read it. <laughs> Don, we've only got a couple of minutes left here. I know. We should get into this. Well, we haven't even read the chapter. I know. We should read the chapter. <laughs> so we shared that because somebody out there needed to hear it. Of course, we don't need to hear that, do we? <laughs> well, he re- reiterated to us yeah. on Sunday and now. Yeah. And so, <laughs> no. We, we need to hear it every day, folks. Yeah. I'm joking. <laughs> Well, uh, Proverbs chapter 2, it says, My son, if you will receive my words and treasure my commandments within you, make your ear attentive to wisdom, incline your heart to understanding. You see the action words here? Receive, treasure, um, uh, be attentive, incline. Pay attention. For you, yeah, <laughs> for if you cry for discernment, lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will discern the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Talking about the mouth. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity, guarding the paths of justice, and he preserves the way of his godly ones. Hallelujah. Then you will discern righteousness and justice and equity in every good course. Man, if our kids today, this generation, if they could read this chapter and just heed it and receive it and operate in it, boy, it'd be a whole different world, wouldn't it? Especially for them, where they're dealing with terrible um, attitudes and uh, feelings of hopelessness and remorse and uh, death. A lot of that is going on in, in young kids' hearts and minds today because of what they're watching, what they're listening to. <coughs> It says here, for wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will guard you. Understanding will watch over you to deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things, from those who leave the paths of uprightness, to walk in the ways of darkness, who delight in doing evil and rejoice in the perversity of evil, whose paths are crooked. This is all one sentence, folks and who are devious in their ways to deliver deliver them from strange women, from the adulterous, let me go back here, 
adulteress who flatters with her words, that leaves the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. We're still all in one sentence still here. <laughs> uh, for her house sinks down to death and her tracks lead to de the dead. Uh, I'm going to let you finish this. I didn't realize how short this one was. <laughs> Verse 19. None who go to her come back, nor do they regain the paths of life. Okay, that's the end of the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> so you will walk in the way of the good and keep to the righteous the paths of the righteous, for the upright will inhabit the land, and those with integrity will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the land, and the treacherous will be rooted out of it. Hmm. Any thoughts, my dear? Uh, just that, that first portion, um, it speaks to me of oscatoltia. <laughs> the, the Latin, Latin word, word for listening. Yeah, listen, pay attention, be attentive, and then obey. Yeah. And and that's kind of what incline your heart. Your, um, a focus, too. That was another word that I thought of, focus. You're focusing your attention on that and mm -hmm. paying attention to that. And so we need to be receptive and open to, to hearing what the Lord is saying and not just um, brushing it off and, and letting it go in one ear and not the other. And yeah, 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 that's a good thing, God. He's saying, no, you don't understand. There are so much things in my word that I want to help you with if you will pay attention to it, to pay attention to what I'm saying. So this all goes back to what we've talked about so far, and that is the fear of the Lord. Mm-hmm that it brings wisdom, that it brings knowledge, it brings understanding. That's what it says in verse 5, then you'll understand yeah. the fear of the Lord. So the fear of the Lord isn't terrorism, folks. It's a healthy respect. It's an awe. Um, when I go swimming in the ocean, I have a healthy respect that I need to be careful and mindful of where I'm swimming, or even Lake Erie, because mm -hmm. I can get out there too far and not be able to get back, especially if there's undertow or things like that going on in the lake. Um, we need to have, in a sense, a fear of certain things. Uh, I've learned that I do not put a gas can... Respect for. What? Respect for. Respect for. Um, I have a fear or respect for not having a gas can near an open fire because it's not good. It can mix. Bust. And, uh, explode or catch somebody on fire. Mm -hmm. I have a fear or respect for driving my car and the potential that it could create. My daughter Angeline, our oldest, um, we started driving, uh, she started driving, and she said something, I said, yep, she's ready, and that is, you know, Dad, I could kill somebody with this car. I said, exactly, and you need to respect that. And uh, we ha need to have a respect or a, uh, a fear of uh, God, and that he is all-knowing, he's all-powerful, he's ever-present, and uh, that he's trying to share things with us all the time. But if we disavow or we ignore what he's trying to tell us, we are going to get into trouble, just like that person that wants to swim across the lake and ends up getting tired and drowns because he doesn't know his boundaries. And so it's important for us as God's people to be mindful of being receptive and teachable, humble, teachable before God so that he can speak to us, that we will hear him, that uh, we won't be so set on our agenda that we go, God, unless you talk to me about this, I don't want to hear a thing. You know, and sometimes people get that way when they're, when they're praying. They say, God, bless me, bless me, bless me. Bless this plan, bless this, bless that. And God's saying, wait, wait, let's, before we go over this and this plan of yours, let's talk about the points of your plan. And uh, there are times uh, in my life where God has, has just shut down and I don't hear him. And I'll say, God, I don't hear your voice. Why? What? What's going on? And, and as I open myself up to listening, I find that there's things that perhaps I've uh, marginalized or I've put to the side and have not taken the time to really hear what the Holy Spirit is speaking to me about God's plan and uh, his ways for me. He wants us to be fat Christians, faithful, 
available to him and teachable. Yeah. And so um, it, it's important for us in this day and age where everybody's trying to run around saying, I've got all knowledge and I got answers for that. And, and they're all opinions. They're not answers. Uh, we see that, that in the media. Uh, people that are doing reporting or any more, they're expressing their opinions or the opinion of the station they work for. And we need to be careful that we are listening to the only one that has the best knowledge and the best understanding of what works for us and makes uh, life in, a, in an abundance, a place of peace for us. And that's God. Um, how important it is for us. If we go and we get counsel from people and we don't listen to it, um, there was, a, there was a king, King Solomon's son, who had the people come to him after Solomon died and said, your father worked us hard. Um, what, what are you going to do? And uh, Rehoboam was the king's name. And uh, there was a man who had left the country, Jeroboam, and uh, came back when he heard that Solomon had died. And he basically rousted up the people and brought the people before uh, Rehoboam and said, so what are you going to do? And Rehoboam went to the counselors and the older sages that his father listened to and said, what do you think we should do? And they said, well, um, I think that you need to treat them right. I think you need to treat them fairly. I think you need to be mindful of not wearing them out. And... Uh, he didn't like that counsel, so he went to his peers, his own buddies, and he said, what do you think I should do? And they basically said, we think you ought to be even rougher than your dad. And so that's what he went back with is, you thought my dad was bad. Wait till you see what I'm going to do. And because of that, Jeroboam said, we're not going to listen to you at all. We're going to split from you. And that's when there came a split with the... <laughs> ten kingdom or ten tribes that went with one kingdom, Israel, and uh, two kingdoms or two tribes that went with uh, with uh, Judah, Judah and Benjamin, and uh, it's sad. And and some of the other tribes did too, part of them, but it's sad that there was that divisiveness because this young king thought he had a better answer than these older folks and. Uh, I've, I've grown to really appreciate, I call them gray hairs, <laughs> or no hairs, <laughs> that, that share things and speak to me, and I, I really try to listen and uh, be careful that, you know, I'm hearing what they say because they have lived things that I have never lived and are able to uh, express wisdom and counsel in the things that I have no knowledge of. So why wouldn't I listen to them? First Kings 12 mm -hmm. is the chapter that that talks about where Rehoboam yeah. didn't, um, he chose to listen to Disavow his peers. the older wisdom that was mm -hmm. there. And because of that, it cost him the kingdom, basically. Uh, it split the, the nation. It's important for us to, to recognize there are people around us that God uses. Um, there's many times uh, when Don and I would counsel uh, gals or couples um, and the gal would say I don't need to listen to my husband he's not saved oh that's not true you need to listen to him because he's your covering he you married him and so there's things that God can speak through him even though he to doesn't you. yeah even and even uh, as doesn't. as ladies have found okay uh, maybe I need to back this 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 uh, story up a bit and they've started to listen to their husbands they were like Wow, he really does have some good things to share. And uh, and counseling people where the guy says, I don't need to listen to her. She's just, she's just my wife. And it's like, oh, buddy, you are shooting yourself in the foot. God gave her to you as a helpmate because it's not good for you to be alone. That's what God said. And there's so much you can learn if you listen to your wife. Just think of all the extra miles you guys have put on your car because you didn't listen to your wife and said, maybe we should ask for directions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should look at the map. Even parents with children because yeah. parents have been given that blessing and that anointing, anointing yeah, to cover 
Yeah. Their children. Yeah, and it's wisdom. important. Realize as parents, you have the authority of God and the anointing of God and discernment to teach your children, to help them. If you them. will go to God and yeah, ask him. If you'll ask God. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we've pretty much... Uh, yeah. Spoken the things we wanted to speak, and uh, hopefully well, we did God get has through used chapter them. two. <laughs> yeah, we did read yeah. chapter two, so let's pray. Father, uh, thank you so much for this time, and we've uh, we've kind of been all over the place with things, but I I believe there's important aspects that we've shared that you wanted us to hear, and so help Don and I, and help our brother and sister, be able to be mindful of what the Spirit is speaking to us. God, our brother and sister, be with them the rest of this week. Bless them, we pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, I'll be back tonight with Pastor David, and we're in the book of Romans, and uh, we hope you'll join us, and that'll be at 7 o'clock. God bless you, folks.